Beware of property tax avoidance schemes. What are they all about? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. You may have seen advertised some property tax avoidance schemes or some schemes for property investors to help minimise your tax with your properties. Now, one thing to be aware of is there is risks to any of these sorts of schemes. And our video today is just really to dive into a few of the details of what tax avoidance is, how it stems to tax evasion, and understanding what the implications are if any sort of property tax scheme that you do suggest going into, what happens if it doesn't work. So that you can just really understand how it all fits together before you make any decisions that you may later regret. There's been a lot of spotlight in the news that has highlighted this with HMRC asking a lot of questions for some of the scheme providers of whether these schemes actually work. It would be safe to say that some of these schemes are quite highly aggressive and really are on the edges and the fringes of tax law. So they're not necessarily wrong, but it comes down to that all important question of where the line is of what is seen as tax avoidance, what's seen as tax evasion compared to what is within the limits of the law. The only way we ever find out where the limit actually sits, where that, that line in the grey area is, is when it goes to a tax case and it goes through the courts to give us some case law to actually understand, oh, this is where the line is, this is where, yes, this is okay, but if we went further than this, then no, it's not allowable from a tax perspective and would see, be seen as evasion rather than maybe avoidance or minimising your tax liabilities. The key thing to note is if you are going into something that is seen as tax evasion, then this is illegal. This is where you'll get in trouble and there'll be penalties and there will be interest. Tax avoidance is frowned upon, but it is not illegal. It is something where you can minimise your tax liability to the best of your abilities by structuring things and doing things in the right way. So it's not illegal. However, prepared, planned tax avoidance is one of those areas it's frowned upon. And the question is, has it gone as far as being just tax avoidance or has it gone into the realms of tax evasion and you're now doing something that you shouldn't be doing, which is illegal? So this is where these tax schemes are coming into their foreground because they're questioning whether they're tax avoidance or they're tax evasion because they're questioning whether it's gone past that line where, no, this isn't just avoiding tax, this is actually doing something you shouldn't be doing. Now, HMRC specifically states that tax avoidance involves bending the rules of the tax system to try to gain a tax advantage that Parliament never intended. It often involves contrived artificial transactions that serve little or no purpose other than to produce this advantage. So as you can see, there's this tweak, avoiding tax or minimising your tax, okay. Tax avoidance where you're bending the rules, not okay. Tax evasion, bad, <laughs> is where we get to. So the question is where along this scale are you sitting? And some of these schemes are very much in the middle, edging towards the more tax avoidance extremes. Now, there are some key signs to be aware of. If you're looking at a scheme, and there are many different ones out there, and some of them will work and help minimise your tax, and others will just be in the face of tax avoidance, which you need to potentially be avoiding tax avoidance. So what are those key things that you probably ought to just be aware of to look out for? First one is, does it sound too good to be true? And if it does, then maybe it is, it is exactly that too good to be true. A key one that we need to be aware of is there's no commercial purpose for transactions. So if there's no commercial purpose, then why are the transactions being done would be the question from HMRC. Where payments are being diverted through a chain of trusts or companies, again, this is a sign that it's probably more a tax avoidance method 
rather than a allowable scheme that would work for you. And it also has a HMRC scheme reference, which means that HMRC are aware of the scheme. They may not be 100% happy, but they have not completely removed it as an unusable scheme at this point. Is open up potentially in the future that they may come and look at the scheme in more detail and disagree with how it is being applied. The reason for having a HMRC number is that HMRC have already identified that it may be a tax avoidance scheme and on that basis they may look into it further in the future which would open you as someone who is using that scheme up to controversy in the future with potential penalties and interest and other things at a future date which obviously you don't necessarily want to be opening yourself up to future potential liabilities. It should be noted HMRC do not approve schemes. So the fact that there is a scheme and they say it works doesn't necessarily mean it has been approved by HMRC or that it will work. It may be that they are not completely aware of it at this point in time. Now, some implications of using a scheme are that there is the possibility that it may open you up to investigation from HMRC as scheme providers potentially have to disclose who is using the scheme or you have to disclose that you are using schemes on your tax return. So they are aware that some of these schemes are being used and they could pick you up on that fact and come and do their investigation to see how the, the affairs are working. Now you could actually receive an accelerated payment notice which is definitely not a good thing. This notice basically says you need to pay all of the taxes that the scheme is trying to avoid. And this is an upfront payment that is payable within 90 days of the notice. This is not going to be something that you appreciate receiving in the post at any point in time. Obviously, as well as the taxes payable, you may also have legal cost penalties and interest that may be become payable. So there is quite a few questions to be asking before you enter into any of these sorts of schemes to make sure that you don't find that it comes back to bite at a future date. One of the schemes that's been highlighted recently is one that is moving properties into an LLTP and having a limited company as a member. HMRC have specifically said that this scheme does not work and they've highlighted the legal reasons why this scheme does not work. Therefore, as you can see, there are different things that you need to be aware of because some of these options from these schemes may not actually work because they see it as tax avoidance, not as methods of restructuring your business. If you are involved in any of these schemes and they do come out as not tenable, then you can speak to HMRC and they will work through agreeing the position with you. I'd probably suggest you have some sort of advisor who works with you through that process to ensure that you get the best results possible. Um, which are not going to be amazing, but at least you know exactly what the position is and you can work forward with it. In recent months, there's been another scheme that they're looking into. This involves using a trust to hold the property with the individual landlord as a trustee and the landlord's limited company as the beneficiary of the income. This has not yet become under HMRC spotlight where it says it is tax avoidance, but they are looking into it and they are getting legal cases drawn up to see whether or not they agree that this is an allowable scheme or whether they see this as tax avoidance. As you already expect, the tax scheme providers are all fighting this to try and make these work and argue that it does work from tax perspective. Obviously, HMRC are looking the opposite perspective and saying this is tax avoidance. So we'll see where some of those cases and some of those positions end up later in the year, next year, as these things obviously take time to review, discuss, debate, get to a final decision on what the position is. But obviously, if you are caught in the middle of this, then there is that question mark. You don't know your position until everything is resolved and settled. You may ask the question, well, how do you protect yourselves? And I think the main point I can say here is the old adage. If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. And I definitely say that definitely rings bells here. If alarm bells are ringing that it seems too good to be true, then yeah, it probably is too good to be true. And it may be something that comes back to bite. But 
check things out, make sure you know what you are getting into before you sign any paperwork and hopefully you'll do things in the right way to help minimise your tax liability and not open you up to penalties and interest in the future. If you are considering using a scheme, then I definitely suggest that you speak to your professional advisor, check what they think to get some good, solid opinion on how it fits together. And if you're already using tax schemes and you're not sure about them, then again, speak to your advisor and hopefully they can just guide you through if they think there's any issues or any areas that you should be concerned with. Stay safe and obviously make sure you go back to that old adage, if it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. And just make sure you check things out before you start signing any paperwork. If you have any questions, then please do leave a comment. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel. And let's make tax less taxing. Let's make tax less tax.